Welcome everybody. In this video, we're going to cover the observer design pattern. The pattern itself aims to implement the idea of observing change and notifying the relevant parties involved in some kind of process. So you have the observers and an observable. When the observable changes, whatever we want to look over, like a timer or a stopwatch, whenever it changes, whenever a certain time period passes, we want to notify the relevant observers. If you are enjoying these videos, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and if you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section. In the following example, I have the alarm object. It's something that doesn't necessarily need to be observed. So this specifically is like a fire alarm that I was thinking of, not the one that wakes you up. So if the alarm goes off, we want to notify the fire station, the police station, and the hospital station. And the hospital is not a station. Nevertheless, it's a station in this example, right? So alarm goes off. We want to notify the relevant parties, which is the fire station, the police station, and the hospital station. We trigger notify, and then they will have to respond, okay? Uh, let's take a look at what happens, really. Alarm as being the thing that we are observing and fire station and police station and the hospital station are the things that are looking after the alarm. The real thing that happens is that they, are, they just get registered to look over or registered to get notified. They are not actually observing it constantly. That is just sort of the mental model of how to think about the pattern. You're constantly watching a thing and when something happens, you react to it in whatever way that you have been told to react to it. With the alarm, we keep a list of our watchers. We, we can register our watchers. So every time we add a watcher, we add the watcher to the list. Whenever the thing happens, which needs to happen, or we notify when the alarm goes off, we go through all of our watchers and we alert them as well as giving them the current alarm object. So they have access to the state of whatever they're looking at. For the actual code behind the watchers and the stations, you have a simple interface with the type of what you're going to pass into there. So it's a little bit generic. So the watcher gets alerted, the value of what it's watching gets passed to it. So watcher of the alarm is the fire station. When we alert, we are saying that the fire station is responding and then the same things happens for the police station and the hospital. This is a very, very powerful pattern and this has been used in many, many places like the Angular HTTP client. Uh, over, that's uh, an unholy place where, uh, where to use it. Uh, not a good idea there. Nevertheless, one of the better places where it is used is in JavaScript frameworks in order to observe change on variables. So this helps facilitates things like reactively changing the DOM and a two-way model binding. So you input some uh, data into the input field, it's, it changes the state on your data. And then if you change the state in your data, the value in the input field changes as well. So you essentially have observers over variables or wherever you're binding the value. If something changes there, you change it in the other place. And if it changes in the other place, you put it back in the other place wherever it's being used. And that's how those frameworks are built. That's not all that there is to it. You don't just put observables everywhere. But anyway, the observer pattern is partly of how JavaScript frameworks actually work. Now, moving on to C Sharp support, right? What does, does C Sharp have anything that gives us a little bit more, you know, control over it? Same as with the iterator, we get the enumerable interface. With the observer pattern, we have two things. We have the Rx library. I'll talk about that in a minute. Over the standard library, the system dot whatever, actually comes with two interfaces. The iObservable, which expects some kind of value that you're going to be emitting, and then the observer of that value. So an observable, a thing that we watch, and an observer, a thing that watches. An observable is going to be emitting a value, so the type that you're going to provide, and the observer is going to be looking at the value that you're going to provide. Okay, so nevertheless, this is a, still a very simple example. We have the alarm, very similar to the previous one. Uh, the interface for the alarm will make you implement the subscribe method. If we take a look at the iObservable interface, we only have to return an iDisposable of subscribe. 
So our alarm has to implement iDisposable and return itself when we subscribe to it, okay? So just in case we are done watching it or whatnot, we can go ahead and destroy it. When we notify, the same thing happens. However, here at some point you're able to complete the observation and the on complete and on next as well as the on error methods are given to you by the iObserver interface. So if we take a look at it, we will see on error, on next and on completed are the methods that you will have to implement. Otherwise, the same thing happens. If I run it, we will see the first time that the value gets emitted, we go to the fire station or whatever. The next time it's emitted, again, we just go ahead, output fire stations. And then finally, once we have called it one too many times, in our case, it is four, it will get completed. So the fourth time, which will really be the fifth, the fifth time that we call it is when the completion message is emitted. Now let's pay a quick visit to intro to Rx. The website is quite simple, but this is the reactive programming model implementation in .NET. And it's essentially a step up or the way that I see it, a step up from the observer pattern where the observer pattern is very synchronous. Uh, Rx and the reactive programming model makes it asynchronous. Whereas before we would want to read a segment from the database, perform an operation on that, and then read the next segment, perform an operation, doing these sort of batched reads and batched operations instead of a streamlined approach. And this is what a Rex does. It can keep uh, the reading of batches and then essentially delivering one item at a time to the process, decoupling the reading of batches and the processing. This will be very, very familiar if you're using messages. It may sound identical to that. And I think publisher and subscriber is kind of like a synony synonymous with the observer pattern where you essentially are observing something or a subscribing to something. And then as that changes or as messages get put onto the queue, you can then read from it from multiple places. But that will probably be a little bit more in the microservices scenario. Nevertheless, I do recommend you come check out. Nevertheless, I do recommend you come check out the our introduction to Rx. I think it's a pretty good library. I, however, will not recommend that you just willy nilly go about using it all over your code base. Not many people are familiar with it. And when they see this, they get confused and they're like, what the hell is going on? Right. That's, that was my initial reaction. Although I think I'm quite all right with it now. So just be careful if you're going to use this library and make sure everybody's on board. But that's an example of the implementation of the observer pattern and how far you can really take it. Anyway, uh, this will be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, subscribe. If you have any questions, as always, leave them in the comment section and have a good day.